CBS News, I'm Bill Whitney. Along the way, they're keeping an eye out for thunderstorms spawned by Juan. Bad weather could endanger the liftoff of space shuttle Challenger scheduled for an hour from now. The flight is a charter for the West German government. It will carry a crew of eight and a space laboratory packed with West German scientific experiments. This is a live special report from AP Network News, the launch of Challenger. Good day to you, I'm Bob Moon. In less than two minutes from now, the 22nd mission of the Space Shuttle program is set to begin. It's scheduled to be the ninth launch for Challenger and the first space flight ever to carry eight crew members into orbit. AP correspondent Dick Giuliano standing by at the Kennedy Space Center now, monitoring the final seconds of this countdown. Hello, Bob, and hello, everybody, from the Kennedy Space Center here in Florida. This 22nd space shuttle mission begins on a bit of a sad note. One of the invited guests to watch the launch, Mr. Kirby Grant, a man known as Sky King from his television show in the 50s, was killed in an automobile accident this morning as he headed toward the Kennedy Space Center here in uh, Cape Canaveral, Florida. Everything is set to go for this ninth launch of the Space Shuttle Challenger. This mission is called Space Lab D-1. The D is for Deutschland, or Germany. The mission is dedicated to West Germany. It marks the first time an entire mission is for a foreign country. Space Lab is managed by West Germany, and indeed the crew's work in the lab will be directed from a site near Munich, West Germany. But as with all space shuttle flights, NASA is responsible for the conduct and the safety of the orbiter. We are at T-minus 37 seconds and counting. Challenger is scheduled to take off just momentarily. The space shuttle consists of the orbiter. Attached to its belly is the large, rust-colored external fuel tank, which feeds the orbiter's three main engines with liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. The three main engines begin firing at about T-minus six seconds. Let's go over now to the voice of launch control. Jim Ball as he ticks off the final seconds of countdown. 13 seconds. Minus 10. We're go for main engine start. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Challenger and the Space Lab D1 mission. And the shuttle has cleared the tower. AP Network News, I'm Dick Giuliano with the Kennedy Space Center of Florida, where the Space Shuttle Challenger has just rocketed off its launch pad for a seven-day mission in space. What a sight! And here comes that ground rumble as it darts out over the Atlantic, trailing flame and a plume of smoke. Challenger is carrying the largest space shuttle crew ever, eight people, veteran astronaut Hank Hartfield is the commander. His crew includes rookie woman astronaut Bonnie Dunbar. Three other Americans, two West Germans, and a Dutchman are aboard. I'm Dick Giuliano, and this has been a live special report from AP Network News. And I'm sin there is a police in Orange County, Florida, say the man known to television viewers as Sky King died in a car accident on his way to the Kennedy Space Center this morning. Kirby Grant had been invited to watch the launch. He was 73.
Now to Houston, AP shut down on time. itself into the charter business, specializing in round-the-world tours. This is Frank Motek at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The Space Shuttle Challenger blasted off right on schedule after a flawless countdown, sending a record-breaking eight astronauts into orbit on a week-long Space Lab mission chartered by West Germany. There have been no problems reported in the early going of the 22nd shuttle mission, the ninth flight for Challenger. NASA spokesman George Diller says now that Challenger is in orbit, the crew will get down to business. The next thing now is for uh, for the crew to begin unpacking and uh, do some quick checks of the uh, orbiter systems and, uh, and the Space Lab. And assuming those go all right, there Within a couple of hours, we'll open the payload bay doors and uh, get the go to activate the Space Lab space uh, module. For the first time, the Space Lab experiments will be managed by the Federal German Aerospace Research Establishment from a space center near Munich, while the shuttle itself will be controlled as usual from the space center in Houston. There are more than 70 experiments on board the Challenger this time around. Frank Motak for CBS News, Kennedy Space Center, Florida. CBS News. This is Rob Armstrong. The multinational crew of eight is due back at California's Edwards Air Force Base in about an hour and 40 minutes. NASA spokesman Brian Welch says the ambitious menu of West German scientific experiments has been a big success from liftoff to this point. You expect to have some glitches on orbit, but on this flight it's been extremely clean. We've been happy with that. They've been able to get a lot of their experiments done. I think the Germans have estimated something like 90 to 95 percent uh, completion of the planned experiments. On Wall Street this morning, the Dow Industrials for the first time moved beyond the 1400 mark before dropping back. Right now, the Dow is up about one and a third points at 1398.05, volume 44 million shares. News. This is Doug Poley. Sending with a landing at Edwards Air Force Base in California within the hour. Bob Scott of Station KNX is there. Weather forecasters are predicting near ideal conditions for the landing of the Challenger here in the Mojave Desert. The sky is clear, the winds calm, the only negative factor is a shallow haze surrounding the base and limiting horizontal visibility to about 20 miles. This landing is scheduled to be a little different than others. Once the shuttle is touched down and slows to a speed of about 115 miles an hour, Mission Commander Henry Hartsfield will try a new nose wheel steering system. The shuttle pilots have been controlling the direction of the ships by tapping the brakes of the main landing gear. That resulted in problems last April in a landing at the Kennedy Space Center, thus the new nose wheel steering system. Touchdown of the Challenger and its eight-member crew scheduled for about 40 minutes from now. Bob Scott for CBS News, Edwards Air Force Base, California. As it is gliding towards
News. This is Rob Armstrong. Go stop, Challenger. Welcome home and congratulations on a beautiful flight. The voice of Mission Control just a few minutes ago as the latest space shuttle mission came to an end. This is Bob Scott at Edwards Air Force Base in California. Challenger came home out of a clear blue Southern California sky right on time. The only hitch was a lot of haze surrounding Edwards Air Force Base and for a time it made viewing a little difficult. But Commander Henry Hartsfield flew Challenger in for its ninth landing without a hitch. This mission carried the largest crew ever into space, eight people, including two Germans and one from the Netherlands. They were on board to conduct experiments with the $175 billion European-built space lab. This landing was supposed to test a new nose gear steering system, but at this point, we don't know if it was even tested or if it was successful. NASA officials here at the Dryden Flight Research Center say they had as much trouble seeing the space shuttle as we did as it rolled out after touchdown. Bob Scott for CBS News at Edwards Air Force Base, California.